I absolutely love Procreate. It's so much fun to use for drawing and even more fun to use for colouring. I use it quite a lot to colour my florals and I get a lot of questions on Instagram about my process. So I'm going to show you exactly how I do it step by step right now. So let's get straight into it. I have my drawing here um, on one layer. It's a California poppy, just in case you're wondering. I'm just going to call this layer drawn um, just so we know what's going on. And I'm going to add a new layer and I'm just going to select that and drag it behind the drawing layer just so we can keep things organized. I'm going to call this one hmm, block coloring because that's essentially what we're going to do first. So I'm going to go into my color palettes. Let's see. And I kind of want this to be red, um, but not a red red, but like a nice uh, crimsony pinky red. Um, this looks like a nice shade that I might try. Um, essentially you're going to start with one shade first and then we might need to lighten it or darken it a bit as we go um, but just choose one shade first for the bulk of the petals. And the brush that I like to use mostly for colouring is a soft airbrush um, just for the block colouring stage at first just to help get everything in its place so I'm just going to use this soft brush tool um, and I'll make it smaller than this, um, but it's just got a nice feathery edge. So I'm going to turn that down, zoom in to test it out, that's a bit too small. <laughs> Maybe about this and then when we get to the edges we'll turn it down a little bit. And um, for the sake of just um, making it a bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and block in the whole of the top of this flower, all of the petals, just in this one shade. So once you're towards the edges, I'm going to make this a bit smaller and I'm going to zoom in. And then I'm going to go into the centre of the flower and make sure this is all coloured in as well. All right, now you have the petals all block coloured in. We're going to go into our colour palette and we're going to go to the disc and we're going to use this colour wheel to lighten the shade up so slightly. So I want to keep it within the same shade but make it look a bit lighter. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to drag it to the top left ever so slightly and then we can go in and test it. Um, so essentially what this colour will be for any of the bits that are um, kind of in the forefront of the flower that would naturally have a bit more light so this kind of part here this part inside would be darker as it's folded in so I'm going to test it here I think it could be a tiny bit lighter so just kind of use it up to your own preference how much lighter you want it to be you don't want it to be too much of a stark contrast as it won't look very natural but we need it to be different enough so that you can tell it's a bit of a lighter area Alright, we have that all filled in. I can see another place here that would benefit from this lighter shade. Just on any parts where the petals are kind of a bit upturned. Any areas like this, I'll go in and just add a bit of shade in there. Again with this line as well. Just add on a tiny little bit. Because it's an airbrush, it can kind of be a bit lighter with the pressure on the pen just to kind of blend that out a bit as well. So any upturn kind of areas on the petals where they're a bit fluted, a bit folded, where they'd naturally be a bit more raised, so therefore would be attracting a bit more light towards them. And you can kind of eyeball it as well where you think these will work. Just keep zooming out to check that it all looks all right and make sure these aren't too blocky so just be light with the pressure on your hand. Especially on the centre bits you can be a bit more, um, a bit more, what's the word, heavier with your hand I guess on the outside where there's a definite line like so but anywhere like here where there's not a definite outline just be super light with the pressure. And I'm going to use a darker shade 
Yes, this petal here I think should be darker than the rest so I'm going to go back to my history tab and select that original base colour we did and I'm going to use this disc again just to move it down to the bottom, right, just to make it a bit darker and then I'm going to fill this area in with that darker shade. Again just start to make it all look a lot less flat. And I think just that little touch on that petal there really helps to lift things up a bit. And while we're here, using that original colour as well, add in a little bit of a feathered shadow on those petals that we blocked in with that middle shade now. Again, just to make it look a lot less flat. Don't be afraid to undo if anything doesn't look right that you added in. I'm just going to gently buff some in on the outside edge. Again, like so. Alright, we're going to carry in, carry it on with this block colouring layer. And I'm going to select a colour for those inside stem and pieces of the flower. So I'm going to use this yellow shade, see how this looks. Just zoom in make sure you get right under the drawn layer right up to the edge of where we added in the petal colour. Alright, we've got that all coloured in. We kind of want to add a bit of um, difference here as well so that doesn't look so flat so again I'm gonna maybe use a darker colour and I'm gonna bring this down on an angle to the bottom left. So kind of lighter, you want to go top left, darker, you want to go bottom right. That's a better way of remembering. And I'm going to just add those into some, maybe we need it to be a bit darker again, so I'll just drag that down again. And I'm going to add that into just some random areas, just so it doesn't look so flat. I think that's fine. And lastly we want to add a bit of green for the stem. So I'm thinking of a olive an olive green. Not too bright of a green, a bit more of an earthy green, so I'm gonna thicken that brush up a little bit. There we go, so we've got our block colouring layer done. So next step is to add another layer. And this layer is our shading layer. So rename that to Shaden. And very important for this step is you want to tap on it and select Clip and Mask. So that means that anything we add on the Shaden layer will only appear where this block colouring layer is. So you can be a bit more free with your hand now and not worry so much about the outlines because nothing that you add on this layer will appear outside of the block colour. Let me show you what I mean. So let me just grab a random colour for now. I'm going to go back to my history because we're going to need this colour as a starting point again. And let me just show you for an example on this petal with contrast and colour. So I'm painting on that layer, but it's only appearing where that block colour is underneath, so nothing's appearing in the white space. So let me get rid of that. We don't want any red on our stem. <laughs> All right, and my favourite brush to use for this step is in the, where is it, drawn? No, sketching, that's it. The Derwent pencil brush. I love this um, pencil brush for my shading. I used to use a water brush, I think, but recently I've switched to this one and I think it's much better. So this is my new, my new technique for doing it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna keep this, um, our original base layer brush um, color for this step and I'm gonna go into these lighter areas first. So you don't want your brush to be too thick here, but not too fine. So towards the top, and what I'm going to do is any areas where I've drawn in a little bit of shading in my ink drawn, I just kind of feather them out with this pencil brush. And keeping with the same curvature of where the lines were flown originally, I'll just brush them out. And because of the nice texture of the pencil brush, it just really goes hand in hand with the kind of style of this ink drawn and helps.
helps to piece it all together. So I'll just kind of do that in all of these areas, not making sure that it's blocky, make sure that it's all feathered out and it's not a solid block of pencil shading. Any of these areas where you kind of added in that initial block coloring as well, I like to go back in with this pencil brush but angle your apple pencil ever so slightly so it kind of um, shades it out a bit more so that it's a bit more feathered and that helps kind of create this effect a bit quicker as well if you were to use your brush on the side, feather it out and then go back in with it on the flat point and add more feather to it, more sketchy lines just to keep it looking hand done. There you go, you can see kind of the effect coming through here on these initial petals. It just helps to bring it all together. So I'm going to go back in with this darker shade and I'm going to drop it down even more so it's almost in the black so it's a lot darker. And then I'm going to use that on these this inside petal that we did and I'm going to put my brush, my pencil on its side just to get that block of colour right at the bottom there where it'll be most dark and then feather it out on the sides and up from the top anywhere where the petal would be folded um, it's a good area to add more darkness I wonder if I can use this on here I think I can maybe use that there This one's got a lot more dimension to it to the others. So I'll quickly go around and do the same for all of these. So now we have all of our petals done, I'm going to go back in with the shade that I used for the inside of the flower and I'm going to darken that ever so slightly and I'm just going to add this sparingly to some areas just to really make sure this effect is shown across the whole of the flower not just on the petals as that's going to look a bit odd. We want it to be replicated throughout the flower so I'm just going to concentrate on the bottom areas of each of these pieces and just feather up from there. So just right at the bottom, add in a block of colour and then feather it out. Do that for every little piece like so. So that was quick and that added a bit more dimension. Go in with the colour that you had for the stem and darken that and we're going to add some shading right at the top there where the flower head connects to the stem and if you overlap a little bit just rub it out and then this is where this really comes in handy as well for um, that clip and mask is just use the thicker part of your brush and travel all the way down the side of your stem that's got more shading on it and it's only going to pick up where the block colour was see the outside edges shaded, go in with the finer point of your pencil and just buff it all out, just adding in those sketchy lines. And there we have it, there's the full technique I have for colouring in using Procreate. And again it's just three layers, make sure your drawing's on a separate layer at all times. Um, if this drawn is something you've scanned in and it's on a white background, simply click this N and turn it to multiply. Um, if it's a black ink drawn and then the same effect will apply where you can add the colouring underneath. So start with the block colouring first and then add a layer on top of that with a clipper mask for your shading. And 
I hope you found this tutorial useful. I'd love to see your outcomes. Share your art with me on Instagram using the hashtag Felicity and Inc. Teachers and tag me at Felicity and Inc. And post um, weekly here on YouTube now um, with new content. Um, but also, if you'd like content more um, often than that, have a brand new art club membership which is available on Patreon um, where you can learn to draw and develop your creative skills and access exclusive monthly step-by-step -step tutorials, guides, prompts, inspiration and more. Um, there's already a ton of content on there that you can unlock instantly and um, more of it is available every month. Um, there's a flat monthly fee for all members which is the same price as a cup of coffee and I hope to see you there and I hope to see you back here on YouTube next time. Don't forget to subscribe. See you later. Bye!